Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tim, and I have decided to condense all of my How to Use Orox videos into one full-length video with all of the tools you need and uh, know-how you need to use the site to its full potential, at least from my perspective. You know what I mean? From a charter's perspective. But, uh... I want to show you guys without having four different videos doing it. You know what I mean? It's uh, I'm gonna to try to condense it all into one, a little bit quicker explanations possibly. But I'm gonna go over the uh, the bread and butter of Orox here, and there's a lot of stuff on this chart already. But this is a bare minimum chart right here. Um, excuse me, sorry. These are all candles, okay? So these candles represent a time frame. So what time frame are we in? The two hours. I mean four hour, I'm sorry, two hundred and forty minutes. That's four hours. So that means each one of these candles represents a four hour space and time. So when you go to the daily, each one of the candles represents twenty four hours and so and so. So that's uh that's the way the candles work. Just so you know. I know some of you are noobs, so I wanna make sure I cover all of that and don't assume everybody knows what you know you know what i mean uh so the candles they all represent so you can go to even to if you want to change the time frame which is what we're, let's cover that first time frames are right here in this corner it says 4h that's four hours you can see it kind of gives you a little flag below it if you hold the mouse on it and it says four hours and that's a good way to get your gauge you can even change it to a one minute time frame 30 minute time frame one hour you know, I always try to uh, use the more logical time frames. One hour is pretty popular. Four hours is popular. Uh, daily is popular. Um, anything that you know a lot of other people use, that's what you want to use. You don't want to use, like, I'm just going to throw a wild number out there, a 41-minute time frame. Because if you use that, nobody else is going to be using that. So 41-minute candles are not going to help you at all because nobody else is looking at the chart. Everything's going to be different on that chart compared to the average, what everybody else is looking at, which may be the one hour the closest to that. So just think of it that way. you got to think of a hive mindset when you're trading. you got to think, what is the other guy doing? Not just what you want, but what the other guy does. You know what? If the thirty or the forty-one minute time frame helps you make money, don't let me steer you wrong. But I'm just telling you, the more prominent time frames are the ones that are used by more traders, in my opinion. So now that that's out of the way, we change to the one hour. One hour is a pretty popular time frame. You can see all of the candles have just changed. And now I'm going to go to the four hour. Watch how the candles change. See what it did? Okay. So now. The, you can see a lot more data on the four hour because each candle represents four of the one hour candles. You know what I mean? So uh, it's uh, easy to see why, uh, what the difference in the candles are. But you also have to understand that that's not the only differences on the chart. And we'll go over that in a little bit. But uh, you need to, the indicators are all different, like from the one hour to the four hour to the daily. The daily 50 MA is different from the four hour 50 MA. But they're all significant, so you need to understand why and what's going on. And that comes with a little experience. I know there's a lot to take in at the moment, for noobs especially. But, you know, take it easy, take it slow. Uh, absorb all you can and keep absorbing all you can. You're going to be, feel like a wet sponge sometimes, but you're going to have to get over it and keep going. You know what I mean? And it's totally possible to learn this market. I did it, so I know you can do it as well. But... Uh, back to the charts. Let's uh, let's do something simple now. We have I showed you the time frames. That's a that's important. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this top part off. The candles. I usually keep it candles like this. You can use look bars. I don't like that. That's a nobody else really that I know of uses those. But they are uh, maybe in stocks they're useful. I don't maybe in crypto they're useful too for certain traders. I don't know. Hollow candles, they're just kind of, uh, they hollow out the green candles. I don't know why they don't hollow out the red candles. It's, I don't know the significance for those. The Hulk and Ashy are kind of a trend. They show trends. and uh, You know what I mean? Even the down, uh, like this is a red candle possibly. and uh, But it still shows up green on a Hulk and Ashy uh, candle. And you can see that the red was a complete downtrend uptrend downtrend it's weird how they work i'm not 100 uh of the 
how these uh, candles actually work and what the deal is with them, how they help traders. But they have always intrigued me. I need to study them a bit more. But I'm just showing you them. I can always change it. But I just wanted to show you that the, there, there are a bunch of different uh, ways. Look, here's a line, your traditional graph. You know, and that's what you think of when you're a kid and you think of a graph. You know what I mean? And uh, it's you can see that the candles do follow the similar pattern as this. Sorry, I keep getting messages. Um, let me see who's messaging me. I had to get COVID tested this morning, so... Yeah, the, uh, I'm just waiting on a uh, message from the guy. But uh, anyways, uh, the uh, the line graph is just a normal graph. I guess it helps out some people, but it really doesn't help me very much. I like the can. I love the, the candles. The candles are just what I learned with. So I, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like learning the English language and then somebody expecting me to speak French. I just can't do it with this. I mean, I, I could probably trade with this and find support and resistance, but the candles are just so much, uh, I'm, I'm used to the candles, you know what I mean? The area and the baseline, that's all uh, extra stuff. I mean, here, I'll click on it. I'm not even sure what it does. I've never even opened up. See, it didn't even do anything. Let's open up the baseline. It won't even open. All right. Maybe I can't do it with this. There, the candles are what I prefer. So I'm going to leave it on candles. But you can see there's a lot of different uh, choices for you. If you want to use something different, be my guest. Here's your indicators. This is just your basic indicators. This is Orox, by the way. I prefer Orox over TradingView. TradingView is just not my bread and butter. They, uh, they charge you to use more than three indicators. And Orox will let you use infinite indicators for free even their advanced indicators so the choice is clear trading view is just overcharging people while orox is doing giving people free access to their platform and unlimited uh indicators versus trading view gives you three if you want to, you can only use three indicators on trading view if you want to use a free account if you want to use any more than that they charge you and then they want to charge me 70 bucks a month to use like seven indicators and I don't really need seven indicators but they also tell me if I want to self promote that I have to pay 70 bucks a month but you know what Orox is a better platform anyway so I don't have to pay them anything and I'm not going to I'm going to use, keep using Orox and smile on my face but now that I'm here you go to the indicators tab and you have all your regular indicators here. I took them all off. I usually have quite a few of them on. You guys know from looking at my daily analysis, right? So what I do is I come down here and I look at these indicators, right? And I look at the ones that I normally turn on. Bollinger Bands happens to be one of them. It's just a, a range of uh, lines that go around the... Uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. I'll go back. But these lines here, I'm going to define them a little better. You see the settings right here if you hold your mouse on the middle part it says settings if you hold your mouse there it says show slash hide which hides the bollinger bands brings them back out it's a nice little tab because sometimes you don't want to delete the stuff but you uh you don't want to delete it but you uh you don't want to take it off the chart either you know what i mean i'm gonna uh, turn it white maybe that'll be better yeah that's a little bit better i'm gonna turn it a little less opaque though so that way we can see it, but you don't want it to absorb all the candles. But you can see when it gets thin, that's when it starts to get volatile. And right now it's pretty thick going up this. But as the, the more we consolidate, like if we start going sideways here, it will give this Bollinger Band, the bottom of it, a chance to catch up and then tighten up again. And once it tightens up again, that can lead to volatility. And that's what a Bollinger Bands, that's why I like them. They, uh, they tell you when volatility is coming. And uh, since we're above the red line, it's looking bullish, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to sit here and try to analyze the charts or anything. I'm just showing you how to turn it on and how to make adjustments. So you turn it on, come over here to the settings, and you have all of these settings. You can adjust the top line here, the upper line, the lower line, the median, which is this metal red line. You can make it whatever color you want. You can make the lines thicker, um, like, uh, oh, yeah, never mind. You can make them all sorts of different things, you know what I mean? And, uh... There's all sorts of different settings in here that you can do to make it easier for you to read. 
So I suggest you playing around with that stuff and learning it yourself because that's the way you do it is through experience, guys. Uh, indicators again. I got my Bollinger Bands. That's my first one, right? Now let's keep going and see if we can find something else that I use. Because, man, I use quite a few different indicators. Ichimoku Cloud. So that's the cloud, guys. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here again. And we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of settings on the cloud as well. And I'm showing you guys this not necessarily because you're going to do everything I do, but I'm just showing you how to change things. You know, I don't like the lagging span on there. This is this green line. You see this up and down back here. It's kind of a, a lagging, and I don't understand the, uh, the reasoning for it, so I'm going to get rid of it. Click that, it gets rid of it. All right, so now I'm going to do the, the background, the green, but I want it to be a little less opaque, okay? I want it to be right about there, so I will maybe a little bit deeper right there so I can see it you see how it's green right here okay now I can actually see it so I'm gonna press oh yeah I want to do the red too just a little darker that way it's a little bit more defined on the chart you can see the red now and the green so uh, that's to my liking I did the settings you guys saw what I did if you need to rewind it and watch it again because every indicator has the ability to be adjusted somewhat in some way shape or form so now we're coming down a little bit more i'm done with the cloud i'm going to go to a moving average now right here in fact i'll click it twice and i'm going to tell you why i clicked it twice because i used to and they're both nine right now right so i'm going to click on the settings that i have been clicking on and uh, I'm gonna go to leave it orange that's the, usually what I do okay I leave it orange and I change the length this is a 9 unit moving average to a 50 I always make the 50 unit moving average orange see how it is orange now but what I want to do also is I want to change the style I want to make the line thicker how do I do that oh yeah it's right here click on that second line I like to make it a little thicker that way it's a little bit more easy to see so you can see this is a 50 MA now but the MA down here is still 9 because I made two of them remember so this one's blue so what I'm gonna do is make this a 200 MA I always make the blue one the 200 MA so let me see I'm gonna uh, make that one thicker too like I said, it's all up to you guys. You see, there's the 200 MA sneaking up from the bottom down here. But there's some of my, that's that's the majority of my chart. I could be happy with this chart right here. This is all the indicators I usually have on. But I will turn on a few more. Since Orox has the ability to turn on unlimited indicators, so I'll turn on the MACD. Let's see where the MACD is. There it is right there, MACD. And the MACD is easy to understand. That's why I like to use it. It's also easy for the noobs to figure out. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. All right, so now I have all the indicators over here I wanna turn on for now. Now I'm gonna come over here to advanced indicators. They have all these indicators down here. It's about seven or eight, maybe nine that they made. These are made by the guys that created Orox and they're very smart guys. And they have created this Orox indicator and it tells you how, when to buy and when to sell. And uh, you know, this is probably a much better uh, way to trade for a noob than just guessing. You know, uh, a lot of people are pointing out, you know, it's not perfect. And you know what? Uh, even the guys that created it will admit that it's made by humans, guys. But I would say that if you use this exclusively, more often than not, you would be in profit versus losses. And that's how trading works. You think I make all perfect trading? Just because it's an automatic trade caller doesn't mean it's not going to make some... Uh, you know questionable calls it's not going to be ultimately at the end you're going to have a profit in my opinion but there are times when it's not perfect you know what I mean so you guys need to what I suggest is learning to read a chart understanding how to read a chart and then letting this accentuate your TA so whenever you like uh you read something you're like man I think we're going up and then you look over here and you're like okay I got a buy signal okay well then that uh kind of puts another chip in the bull pile you know what I mean it helps you decide okay well then now I'm definitely bullish because they're bullish I'm bullish you're bullish he's bullish you know what I mean so it's just one of those things guys I kind of use it to 
uh, I don't use it exclusively like, oh, the, it says a green arrow, we're going up. You know what I mean? I use it kind of just as a, a addition to my TA. And I think that the guys at Orox are doing a great job. So I don't, ha I have a lot of faith in this. Otherwise, I wouldn't promote the tool itself. And uh, I think that the tool is a very good tool. And I think the guys at Orox, they know what they're doing. I've been working with them for a long time, and they're smart guys. And uh, anyways... Um, we got all our indicators out of the way, right? I, oh, yeah, I want to, uh, the MA right here. You got a blue and a red line, so uh, just look at how it works. Going up, we've been going up from here to here. So what's been above? The blue line's been above the red line. So that means it's when the blue line's above the red line, it's bullish. Right now, it looks like it's flipping under, so it might we might come back down. So we'll have to see. Uh, the MACD indicates that a drop might be likely, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Sometimes the MACD's wrong, so... Like I said, you're going to have to play it by ear. That's what stop losses are for. But um, anyways, let's go ahead. We got uh, most of the stuff here. I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is start down here on these tools. And I'm going to get rid of these stars because I want to show you guys something. And uh, I don't want to explain it quite yet. I'm going to come back here. Sorry. Alright guys, now let's go ahead and look at these things down here. Okay, so this is just a, uh, whenever you click on one of these tools and you change your mind, click here and it will, uh, you don't have to do that, but just click there and it will uh, automatically put your uh, crosshairs back on. The crosshairs won't let you really post a line or anything. If you want to do that, you need to come down here. And you can pick any of these lines. This trend line right here is a pretty popular one. So let's click on that. All right, let's say you want to draw a trend line from top of this going up. You know what I mean? And you, you just draw it however you want. Click and click. It's easy as that. Uh, if you want to draw a straight line, somebody told me this the other day, and I've been doing it ever since. I'm so happy about it. I think it was Raz that told me about it. But uh, you click it, bring it over. You see how it's not straight? Press Shift, though. You see how it's straightened out? That's perfectly flat. If you hold shift, it will make it a perfectly flat line. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking for a perfectly flat line, hold shift when you're making a regular trend line, and it will automatically make it flat. All right, now you want to come to, let's go to, uh, these These are not, I never use these guys. If you want to le learn and play with them, that's fine, but they don't really help me. It's kind of a, a com it's more confusing than anything, so I don't ever use these things. But, uh, the horizontal line is very that's helpful here i'm going to show you what it does so let's say you want to i show everybody where the resistance is right here i'm going to go ahead and do it right there bam it made a line that way and that way and if you want to adjust that line just click on that dot and go to oh man it didn't work hold on there we go uh visibility you can click it up like that you see how it made it thicker and let's make it a uh dark blue there we go a little bit more visible i suppose all right there we go now it's more visible so there's your resistance right there or your support whatever you want to call it you know what i mean and uh, that makes the line go left to right it the next line is only from wherever you set it right okay so this line is you set it here it goes both ways infinity it'll keep going down the chart you'll never run out of line horizontal that's what array does array is right here let's say you wanted to draw a line so you click on that you see where it starts it starts right where I clicked it makes a completely straight line all the way across the chart and for infinity so you'll have it on there forever so that's what array is array is a complete and endless line it's uh, so that's what you uh, if you want to draw a real fast quick straight line use array or if you want to do one like this just hold shift when you do it and it'll make it straight as well like I said, there's multiple options on here. If you need to draw a vertical line, you, like let's say you say, oh, there was a big event on this day. You know what I mean? You can do that too. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of different tools you can use on this chart to point out. Like, Tim, why is it this way after uh, this day on the chart and this way before? You know what I mean? Why is it bullish all the way up to here and then it starts getting bearish? And that's what this line can do is kind of separate this side of the chart from this side of the chart if you need to. You know what I mean? There's so many tools on here that are just uh, conditioned. I mean, that 
on the condition that you just barely, if you need them or not, you know what I mean? They have these, they have all kinds of cool things on here, you know, uh, this pitchfork, a lot of people don't know how to use it, heck, I don't even think I know how to use it 100%. Yeah, something like this, where you, you can get a trend like that, you know what I mean? If you set it right, but I don't know how to use the tool very well. But like I said, you can see how it, uh, it could come in handy. I know that some traders do use it, and it looks good on their charts. I just wish I knew how to use it properly. But tools like that are, uh, I don't know why it won't let me remove it. There it goes. All right, um, but tools like that are all on this the second one so you have uh, the modified shift port I'm gonna go ahead and do a fib retracement I already oh my battery's running low hold on I think I could finish up before the battery runs out but uh lift the fib let's say I start here I'm just gonna draw a quick fib it's not even a good one I'm just showing you that's a fib right there so um I don't know why it won't let me delete them there we go but you lay fibs like that, or all the tools like that that you want to, you'll, I have videos covering how to use a lot of these tools, and that's what you need to do is go watch those videos if you want to know how to do that, because that's not what this video is for. This video is just to show you where the tools are and how to find them, and there's quite a few in here. This is like the fib tool kit, like, this is a really good drawer of your toolbox, let me say that much, you know what I mean? This is like where all the screwdrivers are in the real toolbox. You know what I mean? You always have that one good tool drawer, and this is my favorite drawer right here. But right here is also a useful. Uh, you got your brush. You can like, you can do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Let's say you don't want that on the chart. Come up here, and here's another little deal. Wham! Took it right off, huh? How y'all like them apples? But you can do a rectangle if you want. And be like, oh man, this uh, this range right here is. Uh, no man's land or this range right here is deadly if we drop into that range we're going down you know what I mean and that's it that's what uh those you can use those rectangles for a lot of things you don't have to just use it for just ranges you could show support and resistance rotated ellipse like if you want to be like oh man Tim what about right here is there a lot is there enough support to hold us you know what I mean and you can make you a nice little circle showing me exactly what you're at what you what you're worried about you know what I mean and that's uh that's what it's all about is being able to use these tools to your advantage you know what I mean there's a lot of different things you can do with these things like you can even make a cup like I did earlier let me see if I can get it right there to here and then I went like that just to show people uh hey I think there's a cup right here you know what I mean and by doing that, by using that tool, it shows them, and that tool kind of helps me without having me draw a stupid uh, paintbrush all the way around it. You know what I mean? So, like I said, learn how to use these tools to your advantage, guys. Just come over here and play with them. That's what I did. That's how I learned. You learn. You get your text. I mean, all the text is pretty much self-explanatory. So there we go. Tim rules. Uh... You can write whatever you want, you know, how to use a rocks full. I, that's what I, uh, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys that these, uh, the text is pretty self-explanatory. You want to add notes to it? I love doing that. If you want to do it, be my guest. You know, that's exactly what I do with them. I always be adding notes and stuff like that. Now, this one right here, guys, if you want to learn how to use this, this is fine. Head and shoulders works. I've used it before. But a lot of this Elliott Wave stuff, I'm not really familiar with it because I'm not an Elliott Wave guy. But I'd love to learn it. I just haven't had the time and effort to learn it quite yet. But I plan on doing so. I just need to learn it. But until then, I don't use them. But I've used a few of these occasionally, but just like uh, the head and shoulders. I never really used any of this stuff. But uh, like I said, the head and shoulders did work. It's just you have to lay everything good and... Uh, you know, it's one of those things, it's a little bit more trouble than it's worth to me. But like I said, maybe other traders don't agree. If you like this stuff, I suggest you look through it, study it, learn to use it before you, you know, come out with it. But if a lot of people do use this stuff and it does work for them. And hey, I'm not, I'm not talking uh, junk about anybody's strategy. Everybody is a little bit different in trading. 
So if you like using that stuff, be my guest. I just wanted to show you it's here. It's one of those, uh, those part of the, uh, this is one of the tool drawers I never open though because I never use this stuff. If I'm gonna identify a head and shoulders, I can use the lines to do it, or I can use this, but it's just sometimes I just you know I don't even bother with it. It's just that tool drawer right there is a little bit, and this one's also the same way, guys. It's the short and long positions. You can use that stuff. It's just uh, I don't necessarily need to do that. That's not what my style of trading is. So none of this stuff really applies to me because I don't like using making predictions like that. I like to uh, tell you what my ideas are and which way the market's possibly going and where support and resistance is. Give you like a forecast, but not quite a predictions because there's no. I'm not clairvoyant and I'm not. I don't want to be that guy that says we're going to 60k today and then we go to 50k and everybody's like, well, what the heck, dude. You know, it's just one of those things where I, I don't want to be that guy. But, uh, anyways, that tool drawer is not used. This one right here is just mainly for fun. You can see the tools that I've used in the past. You know, you got an umbrella, the moon. You're like, oh, if we break up past, you know, 58K, we're going to the moon. You know what I mean? And you can leave uh, little things like that on the chart. They're just for fun, though. I mean, or if you want to, like, say... Uh, you know, you can leave any of this stuff on here. There's tons of little symbols on here. Um, there, most of them are just look like they're for fun. But like I said, uh, you could probably use some of them in a business atmosphere. But like I said, uh, if we don't make it past this, we're going to get the hammer. You know what I mean? And that's usually just all for fun, you know. So like I said, uh, there's all your tools right here. And also, this is an important tool. Okay, so watch. I'm going to change it to this trend line, okay? And I'm going to click this. And you see, I can, let's say I want to connect this to this. But I can't get it perfect. You know what I mean? I can't click exactly right. What I can do, though, is get this magnet. And come over here. And now the magnet sticks exactly to the top, no matter what. And it, see how it does? See what it does? See it sticking to the top of the, uh, the, the candles? You see what it's doing? Y'all can see it, right? Okay, it's not staying with my uh, crosshairs very much. It's connected to the top of the candles, and that's what I want to show you guys. So look, it connects to the top, and that's perfect. It's not going to mess up if you use the magnet. The magnet's going to make sure it stays stuck. So uh, it's going to be perfect from candle top to candle top. So keep that in mind. That magnet's important, but it also becomes a hassle. Like, let's say you want to draw a line, but you don't want to be precise as it can be. You just want to draw a little trend. But you can't stop it from sticking to the top. You know what I mean? You're like, man, I don't want it to stick to the top. Come up over here and click it off like that. And then you'll have a little bit more freedom to do what you want. You know what I mean? Without it sticking to the top. Because you might not want it necessarily to stick to the top every time, you know? So it's one of those things. Turn it on. Turn it off. It's, uh, it's your world. Do as you please. But I like that tool. That tool does come in handy. So don't get me wrong about that. But, uh. There's a bunch of things I've showed you through this video. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, if you want to share your chart, like let's say, oh man, I made this great analysis. Now I want to share it. Click this. And it will bring up a link. Just like so. Sometimes it takes a minute. Just give it a second. There it is. And then copy it right here. And then close. And you can uh, and you can share that on Facebook or wherever, and it'll show your chart on the post. You know what I mean? That's kind of the, uh, that's the way I share my chart every morning. I use that link. So just FYI, if you do want to share a chart or whatever, you can share it with that link. Um, save it is right here. Just Control S also will save your chart. It'll like take a, a save at that second, and then next time you open it, it'll have all the same stuff. So that way it doesn't go away. I believe that they have an auto save feature too, but you have to go into the settings and mess with that. So make sure you're aware of all of that stuff. But uh, anyways, we have uh, one one more thing I think I want to cover. I I was looking at it and I forgot what it was. Oh yeah, if you want to change your pair, okay. So let's say you want to go. Okay, so this is your exchange right here. I like Binance, so I'm gonna keep it at Binance. But let's say I want to look at ETH the Bitcoin pair so I'm gonna pick Bitcoin that's the pairing now you're gonna come over here to ETH so you gotta come there it is right there I just passed it we 
There you go. There it is. All right, so there it goes. You see it's changing back there? Watch. There's your ETH. So you, that's how you change. You come in here and you got three different ones you can change. But I'm going to change. I, I always change it back before I leave. I always use the tether pairing and come down here to Bitcoin. Because I always leave it open on that chart. But that you see how to change it. It's pretty simple, guys. And you can change it to any exchange you want. Uh, you can even attach accounts. I don't have any accounts attached to mine. But if you want to do that, uh, I suggest joining the Aurox, uh Telegram and speaking with the guys that created the platform. They can help you, help you walk you through it, or even send you. A, uh, I think they have a few videos they can direct you to that will help you. And uh, those guys are really smart. So, uh, like I said, I really recommend Aurox. It's been one of my favorite platforms to use this last two and a half years. So, I highly recommend it, guys. And. Uh, I think I've covered just about everything I want today as far as the basic use of Aurox and how it functions and how you can basically get at least started on the right foot. So I hope you guys have got at least some of your questions answered. If you have any questions, though, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them, and uh, you all have a good day.